We've now graduated to the third section of building interactive data visualizations with D3, getting ever closer to creating our dynamic data visualizations. In this video, we'll discuss what SVG is, how it differs from other image formats, and show how to create graphics dynamically in the browser. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Such graphics are different from other image formats, such as JPEG, GIF, or PNG. The latter formats are raster images, or bitmaps, meaning that they have a fixed resolution and cannot be scaled from their initial size without the introduction of pixelization. Vector graphics, on the other hand, are resolution independent because they are merely instructions based on mathematical formulas to be rendered by software to produce graphics. Therefore, we can zoom in on vector graphics infinitely. Scalable vector graphics are great for data visualizations for a number of reasons. First of all, as we just mentioned, they can be scaled to any size we want. So whether the user is looking at our image on their mobile device or a 70-inch display, the images will be just as crisp. Secondly, because they are just a set of instructions, we can create them dynamically based on our data, changing them as the data changes. Finally, all modern web browsers support SVG rendering. In fact, the markup itself is just XML and looks quite similar to HTML. To get started, let's copy our template HTML file to index3.html and open it up in our text editor. We'll just change the title to be all about SVG and add an SVG tag to our content div. Now let's load the page in our browser and see how it looks. Well, the page is empty. But if we open our console and inspect the items, we'll see the SVG tag hiding in the source. We can think of SVG as our canvas or container into which we'll be adding our graphical components. Like HTML, SVG is a markup language with a whole new set of tags to learn. But don't worry, there really aren't that many that get used. The list of elements we'll mostly be using are rect, circle, ellipse, line, g, text, and path. So let's start by drawing a rectangle. Simple enough, just use the rect element nested inside our SVG tag. Refresh our browser and see what happens. Uh-oh, nothing. This is due to the fact that SVG elements require specific attributes to be set in order for the rendering engine to know how to draw them. For our rect element, we'll need to set its x and y attributes, as well as its width and height. Now if we refresh our browser, we'll see a black rectangle in the upper left-hand corner. And this is a good time to mention the coordinate system used by SVG. Anyone familiar with computer image programming will remember that the coordinate system starts at the top left corner at 0, 0. As we move to the right and down, we increase our x and y values positively. So, for instance, if we had initialized our SVG container to have the width of 300 pixels and a height of 100 pixels, we would have a coordinate system that looks like this. Let's also add some boilerplate attributes to our SVG container metadata to help the browser understand which version of the SVG standard we are using. The next element we'll look at is the circle, since there is a gotcha here. If we copied our rect tag and simply replaced rect with circle, we'd expect a circle to be drawn at the same location and with the same dimensions as our rectangle. The problem is that circles do not have a width and height, so we'll need to use a different set of attributes. CX and CY take the place of the X and Y attributes, denoting the central point location. R is for the radius. Now if we refresh our browser, we'll see our circle. Ellipses work in a similar manner to circles, except instead of supporting a single radium, they require an RX and RY for the X radius and Y radius, respectively. Finally, if we just want to draw a line, we'll use the X1, Y1, X2, Y2 attributes to specify the start and end locations. When we refresh now, though, 
There appears to be a problem. Our page doesn't seem to show our line, even though it does appear in the inspector pane. This is because, similar to the attributes we've already been setting on these SVG elements, there are many others that control the styles of the elements. Here is a list of the main ones we'll use. The missing attribute in our case, for lines, was the stroke attribute. The stroke controls the outline of any shape, but its default value is none, so it naturally wasn't showing up. After setting the line stroke to black, let's refresh our browser and see all of our shapes so far. If stroke can set the line color, let's use it, stroke width, fill, and opacity to jazz up our other SVG elements as well. Now if we refresh our browser, we can see our shapes have some style. Please feel free to take some time to experiment with these attributes. We learned quite a bit here, given our first taste of SVG. Of course, we could have created this quite easily in Illustrator or some other such vector graphics editing program, but now we know how to create these images with code. You may have noticed that we purposefully left out two SVG elements mentioned earlier, text and path. These are a bit more complicated, and we'll take a look at them in the next video, as well as how layering works.